Good morning. Good morning. Oh, the organ is ringing again. Such a bummer. <laughs> Good morning. I always think I'm going a little crazy when I hear ringing in my ears, and I just wonder if it's me or if it's something external to me. That's all. <laughs> Welcome to the First Church in Sterling, where we are gathered in the spirit of Jesus, committed to creating heaven on earth. Welcome to all who need a church home and to all who call this church home already. Welcome to people from all towns and cities and states and countries. Welcome to all who want to follow Christ, who have doubts, who do not believe. Welcome to people of all ages, races, nationalities, abilities, sexualities, and gender expressions. Welcome to single, to partnered, and to married people. Welcome to believers, to questioners, and questioning believers. Welcome to everyone. We welcome you to come as you are and to meet this God who challenges us to be more than we think we can be. We welcome you if you are not perfect, because certainly neither are we, and we know that the church itself has rejected difference and denied God's promise for itself and for others, which is why we say without reservation that you are welcome here just as God welcomes you as a beloved child. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. So we are, <laughs> we can, the high holiday of the church. We actually don't care about it, do we? Because the Patriots aren't even in the Super Bowl. Do we even, oh, we, should, we still care about it. We still care about it. Um, we are especially delighted to see you here if this is your first time with us um, and that you're not home like making your corn dogs or whatever for tonight's big game. Instead, you're with us. And we would love to know more about you. Um, in front of you in packets in your pews, you'll find um, a folder with all kinds of brochures and information about our church. And we would especially love it if you would fill out the welcome card that's in there and put it in the offering plate during our offertory so that we can know more about who you are and you can get to know us. I have a few announcements this morning. First of all, children and youth are always welcome for the duration of our worship service in its entirety. And we have childcare available for those who would like to spend, spend their time in childcare. Paula Fogarty and Jack Scalise are leading our childcare this morning. And if you would like to send your kids off with them, you can right now. They will be down the hall in the Kinder Watch room. Um, and uh, you can also see an usher. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> we are celebrating everything this morning. You can also see an usher if, if uh, later on during the worship service your child is getting restless and, and you would like them to go to child care. But we, we welcome and love restless children, so please don't ever think that we are judging you for having um, squirmy worms in your pew. We love them. Um, Sunday school with snacks and choir practice for all ages happens every Sunday uh, during our coffee hour immediately following church. Today is a little different. Our Sunday school kids, uh, will, or our kids club and our spirit play, play kids and our teens will go and rehearse uh, a song. And then they will get to go down the hall to the Super Bowl box lunch auction, which is like the best thing that we do all year and we don't want our kids to miss it. So if you have never been here before, you're in for a treat. I think Doug is gonna tell you more about it later, but it's the most fun events of the century. Um, <laughs> sometimes I make absolutist extreme statements. That's why I'm a preacher. That's why I'm a preacher. Um, coffee with Pastor Robin on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at Meadowbrook at 10 a.m. If you'd like to come and have coffee with me and other people from church, please join us 10 o'clock a.m. at Meadowbrook Far uh, Orchards um, on Wednesday. Next Sunday, we will bless the La Romana mission team before they leave um, on Friday. So please be here next Sunday so that we can join in that blessing. I'm going this year, so you, you get to bless me. Please, I covet your blessing. Um, and also mark your calendars for pub theology at the mill on March 2nd, Wednesday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. Now, I have an announcement from the illustrious Douglas Davis. <laughs> So as you can see, it's party time at First Church today. So. 
Uh, anyway, <laughs> it, is, it is a big day for First Church and the medical mission uh, to La Romana. We do think the Super Bowl is important, whether the Patriots are in it or not. Yeah. We're getting ready in less than two weeks to bring medical relief and supplies to the Dominican Republic. Uh, but first, we must fundraise to buy the food we will distribute, the construction materials that we will build with, and the Days for Girls kits and medicines that will be needed. And that's where you all come in. We have over 60 wonderful items waiting for your bid. Online auction at, uh, and, and I believe that auction address is in your bulletin today, um, and a little extra sheet. And it's uh, www.32auctions.com forward slash La Romana, no spaces. Bidding ends tonight at 5 p.m. So that's uh, one of our biggest fundraisers. Check it out, it's fun and easy to do that site. It's really uh, quite a way to do auctions. Uh, for those of you that are watching on Facebook Live, you'll find the link in the comment section. Um, but today after church at coffee hour is the main event, and that is the Super Bowl box lunch auction, which is a live auction, loads of fun. We've had uh, great donors. We have, we're just collecting amazing baskets of all kinds of things out there. Um, and so you definitely want to stop by to take a look at these baskets to decide whether you want food, snacks, drinks, books, Valentine's Day stuff, chocolate, chocolate. Um, even, even within the church, can't drink it here, but even some fun alcoholic beverages, but we won't talk about those. <laughs> the creativity of the baskets are amazing, so please come and bid. We need everyone to come over because you know what, it's going to snow a little bit during the service. It's all going to be over and the roads are going to be great after the Super Bowl box lunch auction. <laughs> so you need to stay here through that. All right, so, uh, so just at coffee hour right afterwards, come on down. Um, it, it's a load of fun and we've got lots of opportunities for you to support the mission. Thank you. Doug, Doug agreed. Doug agreed to wear this hat so that I could remain um, pastorally authoritative. <laughs> it was actually for me, and I passed it on to the real princess. <laughs> there are many opportunities for ministry and many events happening at First Church. Please like us on Facebook if you haven't already, because a lot of our ministry happens there virtually during the week. Join our uh, First Church in Sterling, Massachusetts Facebook group. Uh, a lot of our ministry happens in there. Please see your bulletin and our email list for additional written announcements. And as we deepen into worship by saying our, and we deepen into worship by saying together our affirmation of faith, which is printed in your bulletin. In the love, love of, of truth and the spirit of Jesus, we unite, unite for, for the worship, worship of God and the service of humankind. We shall be known by the company we keep By the ones who circle around to tend these fires We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth It is time now, it is time now As the Nazi party rose to prominence and declared their intentions for world domination, German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer found his life changed by a simple question. What if Christians took Jesus' commandments seriously? What if we actually lived out the Beatitudes? For most of the history of the church, the Beatitudes were seen as a bar set so high that we were never actually intended to even attempt them. Instead, they were a tool by which we could recognize our inherent brokenness and seek forgiveness. 
Bonhoeffer imagined a different definition of discipleship, one that called us to take the words of the Beatitudes seriously, not as metaphors, but as commandments. Bonhoeffer wrote, we are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. This call to action compelled Bonhoeffer to join the anti-fascist resistance and eventually led to his execution by the Nazis. Bonhoeffer realized that God is always on the side of the poor and the oppressed. Bonhoeffer saw the face of his savior in the face of the Jews who were shipped off to concentration camps and realized that he was responsible for their lives. Leading with love compels us not just to believe, but to act. And when we do, we will see the seeds of change planted deep within the earth spring forth, like oaks planted by the water, to stand strong in the face of injustice and create a world where all, all belong. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these fires. We, we shall, shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. Won't you rise and body or in spirit and join us in singing hymn number 619, My Life Flows On.
please won't you pray with me? Oh God, call us together as you did those so long ago on a level place with you to discover your blessed, blessed people. Today in this place, love, gather us in. Let us remember, confess, celebrate, and embody the blessed saints of God, the poor, the mourning, the hungry, the hated, and the outcast. Let us recognize the saints among us and in our communities. We pray all this as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Please turn and greet one another with signs of Christ's peace. Good morning, kids of First Church. If you are a kid, come on to the kids' row. We're going to do children's sermon. Come on over. Come on. All right. No, Bob. I love you, but no, you're not a kid. Only in heart. All right, kids. All right, we're going to do a magic trick this morning. And it's a real magic trick, okay? Now, notice the second word. It's a magic what? Trick. It's not real magic. The thing about magic tricks is they seem like magic until you find out the trick. And then once you find out the trick, once your perspective is changed, there you go, Liam, yeah, you got, a, you got room right there. Once the perspective is changed, you see that it was a trick all along. Okay, so kids, I am going to use this Sharpie, okay? Um, all right, Vin, no, you don't. Shh, Vinny, will you tell me if that is a real, Vinny thinks he knows already, he doesn't know. All right, will you check to make sure that's a real Sharpie? Does that look real to you? Okay, you see, see how, uh, no, don't, don't, don't write it on anybody. <laughs> okay, see the, see the little dot? You see how it's real? Okay, I, uh, and now, do you see that my hand is empty? Okay, I'm gonna write. Now, um, teenagers who have seen this on TikTok, don't ruin it. Okay, I have a blank hand, okay? I'm gonna write a word on my hand. If you really do know, don't, don't give it away. Promise me. Okay. I have written a word in my hand. Okay. Now, um, through magic, I'm going to now teleport that word from my brain to your brains. Okay. Now, using our teleportation, or, or not teleportation, what's the word I'm looking for? Telekinesis. You're now going to tell me what that word is. Go for it. What word did I write on my hand? Nope. Close. 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 <laughs> These kids are too smart, man. The word was close. The word was close. You did, Vinny. I, I, I think somebody's been watching YouTube. <laughs> All right. See, the thing about magic tricks, now, if you're pulling a bunny out of a hat, if you're making yourself disappear, it's all smoke and mirrors, all about perspective. And then once you see the trick, do you see what I was doing there? You see how um, I was saying close, close. I was telling you the word, right? But when your perspective changes, you can see that the magic trick was just a trick, 
right? Um, that's how it is in your lives. Sometimes you'll be going through life and things won't make any sense, especially when you're a kid. The world is scary sometimes, it's hard to understand. Then as you get older, your perspective changes. You see things from a different angle. It's like you stand behind my shoulder and you can see me writing out the word close. And then suddenly, things make sense. So if things right now are confusing or if you don't understand them, if there are things that are going on in the world that make you scared, um, just remember that um, your church has your back as you grow, that God has your back as you grow, and God wants your perspective to change so that you can understand this world a little bit better. Amen? Amen. Okay. You can go sit back with your parents or you can sit in the front row, whichever you want. Reading from the Hebrew Bible, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make more flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious. It does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The Gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from Judea, Jerusalem, in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward, reward is great in heaven. And that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Let the church hear what the Spirit is saying. blessed you are when you are poor when your spirit has been tried your help uphold do you know how lovely will be your reward yours is the kingdom do you know how blessed you are when you must mourn when the tears are endless rivers in your soul you shall feel the hand of god that draws you close in consolation 
Blessed are you, blessed are you. In whatever trials and troubles you walk through, the love of God will not abandon you. Blessed are you. Do you know how blessed you are when hunger comes? When no earthly drink can slake the thirst within? It is then you find the fullness of His love poured out upon you. And when peace is like a rumor on the wind, and when mercy fails to make her presence known, hope will give you all you need to be a light that heals the darkness. Blessed are you, blessed are you, in whatever trials and troubles you walk through. The love of God will not abandon you. Blessed are you. <clears throat> oh, my child, there will be struggles still to come. Persecutions for the sake of love and truth. Do not be afraid, for you are not alone. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. In whatever trials and troubles you walk through, the love of God will not abandon you. Blessed are you. Please won't you pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into the heart of God this morning. Amen. In my favorite Broadway musical, I never start a sermon like this, right? In my, <laughs> in my favorite Today. Broadway musical called Hades Town, the main character is Orpheus from Greek mythology. He's a muse's son, an ancient singer-songwriter, and the myth goes that Orpheus is working on a song to please the gods. His song will change the weather and bring the chaotic, suffering, starving world back into tune. It is said of Orpheus that he has a gift to give. He can see how the world could be in spite of the way that it is. I went to see Hades Town the week that Broadway reopens in New York City after being shut down for a year during COVID-19. It will remain one of the fondest memories of my life. The pandemic wasn't over, not at all, but we were gathering anyway to celebrate the arts. Beauty is the most reliable way to find God on this earth, right? And the world had come back to life anyway. It wasn't the triumphant, neat end to the pandemic that we had hoped for. It was far more ambiguous than that, just like life. Joy anyway, joy in spite. There is a scene in Hades Town in which Orpheus raises his glass in a toast and says, to the world we dream about and the one we live in now. As we looked around at the masked faces in that moment, we just wept and cheered. 
There is an iconic advertising campaign in the London Underground called Mind the Gap. It is meant to remind people to use caution in the spatial gap between the train door and the subway platform. And there is a very wide gap between the world as God dreams it to be and the one we live in now. We come to church so that we may mind the gap. That's why we pray every single week that God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's why our mission is to create heaven here on this earth. That's the simple reason why humans still risk joining communities of faith like this one throughout the ages, despite war and rumors of war, feckless and gluttonous rulers, division and plague. And plague. <laughs> That's why we showed up in person this morning, despite the fact that it's safer to stay home and watch church on TV. That's why we turned on our computers this morning even though we could be skiing instead on this beautiful snowy day. We know that we have a gift to give. We can see the world as it is. I mean, uh, the world as it could be in spite of the way that it is. To the world we dream about and the one we live in now. In the scriptures we study each week, we are consistently challenged by the ways that God commands us to mind the gap. This discrepancy between the world as it is and the world as God wants it nowhere, is nowhere more apparent than it is in the Beatitudes. These are commandments most Christians don't even bother to attempt or to follow or emulate because it frankly just asks too much of us. The next time someone tells you that they believe the Bible literally, which is why they don't believe in gay marriage and women preachers, please be sure to inquire as to whether or not they have given all their money away to the poor. The word beatitude comes from the Latin word beatitus, meaning both happy and blessed. The version of the Beatitudes that we heard from the Gospel of Luke is a little different than the one we are more familiar with from the Gospel of Matthew. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus preaches from a mountain, right, from high up. And perhaps one of the most famous and beloved of all scripture passages, it is aptly named what? Sermon on the Mount. In these perhaps less familiar Beatitudes from the Gospel of Luke, however, Jesus preaches, did you notice this? Somewhere else. On a what? On a level place. On a plain. Jesus had spent the night up on the mountain praying, and then he actually has to come down the mountain to the people below in order to prophesy. A large group from all over has gathered there to be healed of their diseases. They just want to touch him, right? He levels the playing field with the people. Jesus consistently demonstrates that God is not unreachable, that God is not above us, but that God comes down, down to us. God can be touched. God is with us. God is among us, God is within us. Just the act of preaching at a level place demonstrates that God's upside down, flip it and reverse it kingdom might look like. Yes, I just quoted Missy Elliott in a sermon. <laughs> his sermon, his sermon on the level place is all about reversals, reversals. Blessed are the poor, the hungry, the weeping, the hated, he says, for they will inherit the kingdom. They will be full, they will laugh, their reward will be great in heaven. And woe, woe unto the rich, the full, the laughing, the popular, he says, for they will be poor, they will be hungry, they will be weeping, they are false prophets. His sermon echoes the prayer his mother Mary prayed 30 years earlier as she awaited his birth. 
He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. Jesus had a gift to give. He could see how the world could be in spite of the way that it is. This vision he has may not seem like a gift to us at all. His speech is very direct and pointedly uses the word you. He says that all will soon find their circumstances reversed. Justo Gonzalez calls this a hard-hitting gospel in that God's good news to the poor is also tough news for those who are not poor. For God's reign to be good news for the well-rich, well, uh, well-fed and rich and laughing and admired, they will have to wake up and change their ways. Make no mistake, these words do not imply that it is better to be poor, hungry, and unpopular than to be rich, well-fed, and powerful. God loves us all, all of us, in plenty and in want. But these are promises, these are promises to those who are suffering in this life. God still sees you and loves you and puts you first. Your afflictions are not a punishment by a loving God. The woe unto's are warnings to all of us that we are to live differently than we do now. With love toward our neighbors, especially the poor, the hungry, and all those who mourn. We are to attend to the suffering just as God does. Mind the gap. It turns out that there is a wide gap between how the world is right now and how we want the world to be. Not just us at the First Church in Sterling, but the entire country. In a piece by New York Times columnist David Brooks, who claimed America is falling apart at the seams, he cataloged everything from reckless driving to hate crime to a decrease in charitable giving in support of his conclusion that this is what it feels like to live in a society that is dissolving from the bottom up as much as from the top down. And meanwhile, a large majority of Americans agree that something is very, very wrong. In a recent NBC News poll, 72% of Americans said the country is headed in the wrong direction. 70% answered no when asked, can the nation come together? And 76% believe that American democracy is threatened. When asked to characterize the country, respondents used words like downhill, divisive, negative, struggling, lost, and bad. This is without even mentioning the global climate catastrophe. There are few people who feel happy and blessed right now. Many think, given all of this, that the work of the church is superfluous, or worse, adding to the divisiveness and negativity, right? We may even think that, even though we're sitting here in these pews. People have left churches in droves during the pandemic, accelerating a trend already in motion. And in this culture, some think we are obviously outdated, bad, and past our prime, that we are just a beautiful expense, right? Even if we are not actively harming anyone, at the very least, we are like the band playing Nearer My God to Thee while the Titanic sinks. We are fiddling while Rome burns. This is what some people think, but this is not what the first church in Sterling thinks, right? (laughs) Because they couldn't be more wrong. We are not past our prime. We are before our time. We have the power. We have the power to unite in the love of God, to help those who are struggling, to give hope to the hopeless. We have a gift to give. We can see how the world could be in spite of the way that it is. We are minders of the gap. 
in this great article that my friend Sarah Goodwin sent me called Forget Your Perfect Offering in Praise of Brokenness, author Wendy Willis says, when I close my eyes and ask myself where my brokenness and the brokenness of the nation overlaps, belonging is the word that rises up over and over again. When I consider when I am most graspy, when I am most likely to engage in casual cruelty, it is when I fear that I don't belong. It is when I feel like I am on the outside of some warm circle that I can, that I can see but cannot quite penetrate. Do you know this feeling, congregation? We are here because for many of us, this church draws a penetrable warm circle ever wider when it's at its best. And we're not perfect at it, but we're trying at least, right? Here, our deepest held values meet up with the world's deepest need. We put our energy and our time and talent and money and yes, our beauty into building and rebuilding this place because we know that belonging heals when it seems like cruelty reigns. We know that this place matters. We know that depth of relationship and communities of accountability and justice making and the power of love changes not just our communities, but the world. It changes the world. This week we gathered on Wednesday, no, yes, Wednesday, to attend to our suffering for a beautiful service of healing and resilience. And the next day on Thursday, your leadership gathered. 32 people, raise your hand if you were there, if you're leadership of this congregation, look at all these people. These are our leaders. These people gathered to talk about the things that make them most proud of being a member of First Church. And they listed all the ways that we mind the gap. They said our wide welcome and our children and youth and our La Romana medical mission trip, which we celebrate today, and our unanimous vote to become open and affirming to the LGBTQ community in 2017, and Food is Love and the Deacons Fund and the Remote Learning Center, and calling every member and friend weekly during the early days of the pandemic. Our worship team and ops team and our ability to pivot from online to outside to back inside with safety precautions and technology and never missing a single service entire pandemic long. Even during the shutdown. Pizza Church and Charlie's testimony about it the ways in which our leaders really listen and change their minds, that was my favorite one, our diversity of thought, our theology, and our ideology. We heard about ideas for new ministries to mind the gap from all of you, more affinity groups for connection, dances and dinners and talent shows, sponsoring Afghan refugee families, sponsoring laundromats and schools and free childcare, outreach to the senior population, climate change and racism study in action, and so much more. All of this is expensive and you cannot put a price on its value. We have to fund it. We have to fund it with our pledges and we have to show up we have to show up for one another and we have to show up for our mission. We have to serve and we have to act. The time is now. We cannot wait any longer. We cannot wait for people to agree, agree on all things ideological or theological or for more people to return from their two year COVID absence or for the church to have enough money and volunteers we never will, for the mass to be gone or the restrictions to be lifted, for the country to be less divided. We don't have time to wait. We are, a, we are not a church that wrings its hands. We are not a church that waits. We are a church that moves. And we are a church that has fun while we move. We are a church that can do hard things. We are a church of joy. We are a church of resilience. We are a church that believes that God is love and love is love. This is the place in which our deepest held values are lived out in the world so in need of healing. Beloved, we were given a gift when we were given this church. 
we can see how the world can be in spite of the way that it is. So raise a toast with me, will you? Raise a toast, a virtual toast. Join me on Facebook Live, everyone, <laughs> to the world we dream about and the one we live in now. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> there are prayer slips in front of you in um, in front of you in the pews. They're no longer in the bulletins. They're in this little packet in front of you in the pews. If you write down your prayers of the people and bring them forward into this basket, I will pray them. We will pray them together. Thank you for holding that up, Brady. We will we will pray them together. Um, and if you pray on Facebook Live, we will pray your prayers all week. And we will sing ourselves into a time of prayer now. Walking, walking with you, walking with you is my prayer. hoping that he's having a good time, even though he is sometimes rude. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Jesus told us to pray for our enemies. God, we ask uh, continued prayers for my friend's daughter, who is, a, is in week eight of a high-risk pregnancy. No one has tried harder for this little one. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in loving memory and forever gratitude for the friendship of um, Jovani Cotton, who passed eight years ago today, but reminds us of love daily. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with, uh, for Ruth continued health. Um, this is Martha's mom. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we also pray with, uh, with Martha for Bob, um, for his sobriety. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we also pray, pray with uh, Martha for home, the homeless. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray prayers for Ken O'Reilly, who's having surgery on Wednesday. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
We pray for the people of Ukraine, God, in your grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. Through our prayer. We pray for my husband's cousin, Jeff, and all who know and love him as he enters hospice care today. God, in your grace and mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Luisa Damiano um, that lots of money is raised today for La Romana, and she also prays that there is no war in Ukraine. God, in your grace and mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Will you pray with me? God, in a world whose inequity is apparent to anyone who opens their eyes, we pray that you would strengthen us to create a world where all are equally loved, equally held, and equally safe. In a world racked by war, we pray for peace. In a world full of misunderstanding, we pray for empathy. In a world of suffering, we pray for wholeness. Help us to live out the radical Beatitudes. Help us to make this world of blessedness that you envisioned. Let your dream for the world be our dream and our waking work. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We have invited several people this month to do stewardship testimonials, and today we are honored that Sean O'Reilly, who's going to start walking up right now so that we don't have to wait any longer for his fantastic testimony, is going to talk to us. He, um, he addressed our leaders on um, Thursday night, and I said to him afterwards that he makes me want to dump out my entire bank account into his hands. He is so good. <laughs> so not to oversell you today, Sean, but without further ado, Sean O'Reilly. Thanks, Robin. Uh, good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sean O'Reilly. Uh, my family has been um, a member of First Church for the past 20 or so years. Uh, I joined the governance board last year, and before that I was a member of the church community, MLT, um, and I've also served on the stewardship committee. I would like to provide some perspective on where this congregation was back in 2015 when Robin joined, and then take a look at where we are today. Uh, in 2015, we had a five-year vision plan called Vision 2020. The vision was well-defined, but I would say it was very aggressive in our goals, but we had a new pastor who was energetic and passionate about achieving those goals, along with a very strong leadership team. The dream budget that year was aggressive, much like it is this year. We had a significant gap, and we were considering cutting back on the dream. Delaying the five-year plan for one or two years to raise the funds needed to get it started. We took the ask to the congregation. The ask was pretty simple. Are you committed to the mission of this church? If so, consider aligning your giving with your values. To make a long story short, the congregation step, stepped up and increased their pledging, aligning their giving with their values and commitment to the church. We were able to raise the money we needed to fund our dream budget that year. We didn't wait. When I presented the stewardship results to the congregation back in 2015, uh, this is what I told them. Thanks to your commitment, our dream budget has been funded. To that end, in five years, the open and affirming welcoming process will be complete. The, diver the, the diversity of First Church, theological and otherwise, will be embraced and encouraged. Worship and spiritual development will be dynamic, relevant, and be offered in many variations and worship experiences. Our local, regional, and global outreach programs will have a clear focus and we'll have active support. Membership will grow in numbers, in participation, in faith development, in small group opportunities, and in the depth of knowing and caring for each other. There will be strong participation in spiritual and educational development programs for children and youth and adults. And many First Church programs will be open and publicized to the community. Um, I presented this to the church leadership on Thursday and was pretty amazed because it was really a bold statement 
on my part. I mean, <laughs> seven years ago, but, but that was the vision that we had. And that was the, uh, the vision that we needed to fund. And we delivered on all points. I mean, we really knocked it out of the park. Um, so look at where we are today. We have a vibrant and diverse youth program spearheaded by Pastor Zach. We have, sig have significantly enhanced our social media presence. Uh, we didn't even have a website before uh, Robin joined. Our worship and music programs are inspiring and dynamic and have allowed us to continue to worship together and connect during these difficult times. And to think it all started with that first campaign seven years ago. We challenged the members of this church to fund a dream budget, and they did. They did not wait. To some extent, we are where we are today as a congregation because of the courage and commitment of that congregation back in 2015. Yes. So why do I give to uh, First Church? Um, I give, it's because it's what I do. Growing up Catholic, you always put something in the plate. I give because I have the resources and I can. I give because I am thankful for all the blessings that I have. Uh, but more importantly, I give for all of you. I give because I know that it is, it is money well spent and the church will use that money to touch the lives of so many people in this community. Over the course of the past two years, I have personally come to have a deeper appreciation of what this church does. I guess it could have been my reversal. <laughs> On St. Patrick's Day of 2020, exactly one week after Governor Baker declared a state of emergency in Massachusetts, uh, I lost my job. Losing my job was bad enough, but being unemployed at the beginning of a global pandemic was something else entirely. There was so much uncertainty, and without the stability of a job, it was very difficult. The church was the first to reach out to me and my wife. The deacons wanted to let us know that they were there for us in case we needed anything. Then a little more than a year later, about two months after I had found a job, I found myself in the hospital for a few days. It was during Holy Week, and I was, able, uh, I was actually able to attend Maundy, Maundy Thurs, uh, Thursday service from my hospital room. When I got home, Food is Love was at the door every Monday, bringing meals to me and my family. So to be honest, I never really saw myself in those situations, but it was really comforting to know that First Church was there for us, that we had the love and support of our community. I give because I know that the work this church does touches lives, but to be honest, until you actually are in one of those situations, you can't really know how much this church means. And we do it every day for so many people. In closing, I just want to say that I don't know about you, but I think it's once again time to step up and fund our dream budget for 2022. We need to be committed and align our giving with our values. We need to be as courageous as the congregation was back in 2015. We can't really afford to wait. And as Robin always says, lives depend on it. Thank you. There are many ways to pledge. I'm sure you've received, or you should receive soon if you haven't already, uh, the pledge packet in your mail. There's pledge cards there, but more excitingly, you can now pledge online thanks to Dennis Mulryan, who's yeah. ducking down over there so that you <laughs> won't give him any credit www.fcsterling forward slash pledge. It is that easy. You can take out your phone and do it right now. We will be so grateful. This morning's offering will now be gratefully given and most gratefully received.
for these givers. May we use all of it to create heaven on earth. Amen. Please join us in singing our final hymn, number 632.
world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Remember that you belong to each other and the earth because you belong to God. Love and serve the Lord. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. Amen. 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 Amen.